Um, my, my name is Janice and Young. I'm a, a singer-songwriter okay. slash junk seller. Uh, okay, so I'm going to explain to uh, Jameson, Jameson yeah. Yeah, yeah. about Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And he's heard me like talking about Bitcoin in this hacker space for a few days now and getting little bits and pieces, but he doesn't, he's a total beginner to Bitcoin and he, he was very curious to learn about it. And the one, the thing is that he is not a technical person. And, so, and I wanted to give him some video on YouTube to learn about Bitcoin, but there are no videos. So I, I thought we would do this and kill two birds with one stone, educate him about Bitcoin and provide a way for normal people to learn about Bitcoin. So, I suppose you want to know what is Bitcoin, right? Or, or, yep. or would you rather know about the history of Bitcoin? I'm not just, just what, why is the Bitcoin here? Okay, well, uh, well, Bitcoin is a system that, it's a, it's a monetary system, a currency, but the very unique aspect of this currency is that the operating of the network is decentralized. Nobody owns uh, bitcoins as a whole. So, like the like the government can uh, print more money, mm -hmm. they cannot. Nobody can uh, control the supply of bitcoin. So, government government can say, you know, like, uh, you know, let's raise interest rates. You can't do that with bitcoin. The the growth in supply is fixed. What what creates the value of the coin? Uh, Bitcoins don't have any like intrinsic value. They're valued by what people are willing to pay for them. So, if if you gave me like a bunch of fifty pound notes, mm -hmm. uh, fifty euro notes, and I like threw them on the floor and set fire to them, and I created a bunch of ashes, it cost me all those like fifty euro notes to create those ashes. But those ashes aren't worth anything mm -hmm. because I can't do anything with them. But the reason bitcoins are so valuable is because uh, they act as a really useful mechanism of trade. I know I can use Bitcoins to do stuff with them. Like why do you value uh, a 10 euro note? You value that note because you know that tomorrow you can go outside and get something with that 50 euro note in, in return. Um, and what, um, what about the supply and demand? How do you create the Bitcoin? Okay, so you asked actually two questions there. You talked about like the supply. The, the value of the coin and, and how to create the coin. Right, so uh, I mentioned before that it's a decentralized system. Mm -hmm. uh, the actual way it like, works is that there, there is no central party that is, you know, so like when I say I send some money to you, that's a mm -hmm. transaction. There's no central party that's like acting as the middleman behind that. Uh, transaction. So PayPal's not taking your four and a half percent. Right, exactly. It's a, instead what it is is a big network. And everybody who participates in this network is also in some way responsible for the maintenance of this network through uh, the use of like algorithms, and mathematics, and what this means. The potential fraud, or there's no real potential. There's no potential for fraud. So what this means is like. Uh, is that, you know, so you, you're asking about the supply. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I like send some Bitcoins and make a transaction, there are certain people in this uh, community or, you know, set of nodes or participants who are helping validate those transactions doing these uh, mathematical calculations. And so what they're doing is they're actually securing the network and making the network run and as a reward for their valuable service they get some bitcoins and that's how bitcoins are introduced in the system okay so if, if i do if i do some server maintenance for someone or i do some work on the internet online or something like that and i don't really want the tax man to know about it i can get the, i can get the uh, person that i've done the work for to pay me in bitcoins and have those bitcoins and therefore, um, th therefore, I can then buy other things with, with those bitcoins. Yeah, you can. But is, is that is that is that happening often? And like, are there a lot of providers of um, internet services that are, that are you know or people working within networks that are doing jobs for each other where they're paying them in bitcoins? 
Well, you could easily do that with cash, you know, but people still pay their tax on cash because they have to declare their assets. Because, yeah. like, if you're caught, you get a pretty, like, hefty, you know, sentence or punishment. So, so yeah, uh, it's no, it's no worse than with cash. So if you, but how can you be, uh, so if you're caught with bitcoins, you're technically having to pay tax on those bitcoins because that's sort of an income or, or not? Right, because they're like a commodity or an asset. Like so if I, if I were to buy like, you know, a hundred thousand mm dollars -hmm. uh, worth of, you know, baseball cards in order to hide my income, that would, yeah, technically be classed as like evading tax, yep. so I think. So, so uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose, I suppose, uh, but, uh, I suppose now that people, people are kind of trying to uh, avoid the taxes because, you know, if you're just paying the taxes to the bank, then it's, it's not, not really very fair. So the, the, this is kind of like a... a oh, you mean uh, fees to the bank? Yeah, just fees for transactions like PayPal, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, like PayPal transaction fees and, and all of these just hidden fees, you know, when you're doing a transaction from here to the US or something like that, I, I'm, I'm just I, I'm selling a lot of, of, uh, of junk on, on the internet sometimes and um, and every time I sell something I, I have to pay uh, you know, a 10% fee to, yeah, to the eBay and then, good. and then 4.5% to PayPal. It's, it's kind of weird that we like live in this like electronic world and yet like this monetary system that we have that's so inefficient, mm -hmm. like you know Bitcoin I said before is backed up by you know, mathematics and cryptography, mm -hmm. as opposed to our current system, which is backed up by you know the law. Well, it's, um, kind of, it's kind of weird because the banks used to have a kind of validity for their charges because they they had to employ so many people to um, to actually do the paperwork. Right. But now the paperwork is digital; the fees yeah. have gone down. It's just a person sitting behind a desk pressing some numbers. Yeah. And you know, like something like you know something like. Uh, you know, like the current monetary system. Mm -hmm. Like, think of all of the waste there. You have to cut down the trees. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to manufacture them into paper. Then you have to like print it. You have to transport this money in trucks. But there's not really that much things. money being used now, anyway. I mean, most of it, most of it is happening through credit card transactions. So, your big opposition are, are companies like Visa and, and Amex, who are, who are really taking a lot of money on every single transaction that... that uh, and Western Union too. And Western Union. And but Western they still have to hold a lot of money, you know? And like, and I was saying about the paper money, mm -hmm. which has to be stored in these buildings, but you was, there's also the bank employees who have to sit inside the bank, uh -huh. and you have to heat up the banks, and you have all of this unnecessary expense. Like, Bitcoin is like purely electronic. Uh, there is no middle middleman taking a cut. Uh -huh. It's truly democratic, and because it's decentralized, it's also incorruptible. And so, when you said that there are there are kind of groups within the community that are protecting the community of Bitcoin, is there some kind of register for a coin or, or something like that, or no. something that? Okay, it's a. There is like a mathematical algorithm. Mm -hmm which all of the people who join the network have like agreed upon and you know like if I suddenly decide that I don't want to abide by this algorithm and I change it in some way mm -hmm. then like all the other participants in the network will reject me because I'm not following the, pr the protocol to the letter of the word and my money will become worthless. So, so it's what, a system what are the, what that's... Are the so how can your money become worthless then? Uh, simply because uh, nobody would accept the validity of anything I do. It's impossible to cheat. So the, 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 the value of your money is created by the validity of yourself? No. Uh, the, the, the validity of the money yeah. is uh, accepted by this mathematical algorithm mm -hmm. which already exists mm -hmm. but you abide by. So. And how do you how do you how do you not abide by the algorithm? Uh, by changing the program in some way. Okay. Also, if you were if you were to kind of like if you were to defraud a bitcoin, you would find the the system would pick it up quite quickly. Right. If you if you kind of made 
two bitcoins into one or something like that. It wouldn't even have to pick up. It would just straight away outright reject anything you do mm -hmm. because they wouldn't be valid. Okay. You know, they wouldn't follow the rules of the network. And are there many? Are there many sites like music sites or anything like that? Because I mean, yeah, there is. There's loads of them. So, uh, so you know, like how you know how people you know how scientists mm -hmm. on these documentaries often sound like very poetic when they're talking or like you know romantic about uh, you know science and stuff. Uh, there's a guy on the internet who who take who takes these scientists and mixes them with classical music. Mm -hmm. And I'd be listening to him for months. Scientists with classical music. Right. Okay. And I'd be I was feeling really inspired. Mm -hmm. Like it really like changed my worldview in some way. And he really contributed to my character and I wanted to like donate to him. Mm -hmm. And I tried many times. So you know, I'd go to PayPal and try and enter all my details and it wouldn't work or there were other problems. And eventually I just asked him, you know, like, hey, do you want to accept Bitcoins? And he said, uh, oh, let me check it out. And then he sent me another email, like, uh, a little while later. And, oh, yeah, definitely send me some Bitcoins. So I sent him some Bitcoins, my donation to him mm -hmm. for as appreciation for his work, which I enjoyed. And I came, I looked, I checked his address a few months later, his Bitcoin address, and he had got like several dozen donations from other people. That was a really cool thing for me, you know. I had provided an extra avenue for this artist to... So you, you think you could money. kind of uh, potentially tag your website with a, a Bitcoin donation and then people could find it or, or something like that? It's or very simple. It's like much easier than PayPal or anything. You just, you know like when you're on Bitcoin, you get like this uh, address, these funny like numbers, and that's like your telephone number, but for Bitcoin. And if you put that, just that, that string of letters, on a website, people can send money to you. So if you've got that string and, and your account gets really, really big, and you've got like millions of Bitcoins, yeah. um, and then you buy stuff with your Bitcoins and you get it delivered, how can anyone within, um, how can the tax man know about any of your transactions yeah well bec yeah that's uh that's so if, that's you, if, you, if you if you if for if for instance i would i would have like uh i don't know sell some electronic appliance that i that i that i, that I created at home or something like that and um, i made it out of trash that i found at the um at the rubbish tip mm -hmm. and then i would um I would sell this gadget that would be very innovative um, and everyone would want to buy it and there was no trace of where the objects around it came from and then I would sell it and, yeah. and, and post it. Post you it very well could do that. And uh, yeah, it's, so the entire history mm -hmm. of transactions in the network is public. But the transactions are just to these like funny addresses, which so these numbered addresses. So right. So but, but and then you then can create as many of these addresses as you can. So you could change your address, for instance, each week on your website or something like that. Yeah. So, so or you can give different addresses to different people, and mm -hmm. and you control those addresses. So you can send money from them. But yeah, here's the uh, I mean, dichotomy. Uh, but but then uh, 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 so the dichotomy is that like. You know, if you're if you're if you're very careless, mm -hmm. you know, as m a lot of people are, then yeah, it's it's pos it's certainly possible to trace payments back to you. Yep. But if you are very careful, then yeah, it's definitely possible to to load the money, confuscate the origins of the money, and not but be that's traced. A, but, that's a, but generally, that's only a, a small percentage of the population that are wanting to do right. that anyway. I mean, uh, yeah. the, 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 I, the real benefits uh, are from are from like less payments to PayPal, less payments exactly. to Visa, less day-to-day -day transactions. Like maybe there could be a Bitcoin address at the local health food store or something like yeah. that, and you could you could you could pay for food products potentially at the health food shop. Yeah, well, I think it's pretty cool that like there is a system which is you know decentralized, so it's you know completely unregulated, mm -hmm. can't be controlled, nobody can tell it what to do. So I can set. I, I, for instance, I have a friend in Iran mm -hmm. who contributes like a tremendous amount to uh, 
you know, develop, helping develop like free software that people can use on the internet. Uh, but because of like some sanctions, you know, from the US, so one politician has a disagreement with another politician, he suffers as a person. He's not able to participate in this like global, uh, you know, community as an equal. And something so like Bitcoin, like Wiki, WikiLeaks, or something like that, where where they exactly PayPal, like where PayPal, PayPal, PayPal yeah. actually. In fact, WikiLeaks accepts Bitcoins uh -huh. as one of two remaining payment options that they have. What's the other one? The uh, a bank deposit in Germany. Wow. Yeah. So Bitcoin is like one of their lifelines right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what? What? So so if people want to give money to WikiLeaks now, they would they would. Um, they would go and um, how, how, how would they create some bitcoins for themselves and then give them to WikiLeaks? Yeah, would, they wouldn't create bitcoins because uh, remember not earlier, create, not create. They would they would go to a website. Which website would right. they go to to buy the bitcoins? Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Well, I said earlier that there are these people who are getting rewarded for validating the network. Yeah. The one the one thing I should say is uh, the more people who are doing this validating, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the less of a reward uh, each person gets. So, the, so if you if you start off and you only have five people in the network validating bitcoins, right. then uh, the, the bitcoin the bitcoin it, it, it's not so functional. But the more the more you know, more more people involved in the network, the, the more equal the network is, and the more democratic the right. prices are. Or, or right. Whatever. And so, and how many how many people are involved in, in the network at the moment? Do you yeah, it's it's very hard to estimate. But it, it could be like anywhere from, you know, the tens of thousands to the hundreds of thousands. Wow. So, and, and what, what about the discrepancy in currency exchanges, like, you know, and people potentially um, buying bitcoins in US dollars, then exchanging it to check crowns, holding them in check crowns, going back into bitcoins and, and going in and out of these, these currencies, is it? Okay, so, so let's, say, let's say that I, f I saw that the price in US dollars was a lot more favorable mm -hmm. than the price in Czech crowns. That, this is for buying Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. What I can do is I can actually make some profit there, right? Because I can, you know, uh, I can like change my Bitcoins over to the dollars and I can sell them in dollars yep. and then I can use them to buy in crowns. In crowns and, uh, so these are, these are uh, as time goes on, this, this, um, this will become more equal, there will be less waves in the system. Right, because of the arbitrage. Yeah, yeah. So like, when there's this gap, you know, the more people that actually do this, the more it brings the prices equal with yeah. each other. And actually right now, like, the gaps are, there are some gaps, but they're pretty small. Mm -hmm. And it's only occasionally, like, when some big event happens, that you see, like, suddenly a big chance for arbitrage, and maybe, like, 20. So if, you have, if you have, like, an event in Germany where you've got 10,000 people going out and paying in Bitcoins, yeah, an event, yeah, something like that, or an event is like someone comes along with a lot of money mm -hmm. and decides he's investing his whole, whole life savings into Bitcoin and he buys up like a huge amount. That's, yeah, that's happened like several times. What, what about uh, the potential for um, clubs and parties to have like, uh, you know, uh, people can come to the club and, and they can say, radio, uh, um, uh, you know, they get 20 euros, get 20 euros of Bitcoins and then they can go to the bar and gradually by using bitcoins, is that is yeah. that something that's happening? Or? Yeah, well, the bitcoin system as it is right now mm -hmm. is is still in its early days. Like when the internet was first invented, it was a very difficult, hard tool to use because people hadn't yet thought up all the all of like how to make the internet accessible. They hadn't thought up like you know we can have websites, mm -hmm. uh, and they hadn't thought up you know like we can have email. It was just a very basic thing for transferring data and you had to be a bit of a hacker or a geek to use it. And Bitcoin likewise mm -hmm. is still in its very early days. It's only used a lot by geeks. And people haven't yet thought up, like what is, there's a lot of, you know, experimentation in what is like the best system for buying in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, there's these mobile phone uh, systems where you can, where, you know, like uh, the club or the bar uh, makes this like QR code, which is like a barcode. Mm -hmm. Uh, then you get the other phone, your ph your mobile phone, and you, you take a photo and it scans the thing and then you can send Bitcoins to that. The other cool thing is, is uh, I've got one here, is uh, 
physical bitcoins. Uh -huh. So what this what this does, what this is, is is a bitcoin that you can buy, and it's actually worth one bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's worth one bitcoin, even though it's just a piece of metal, is because it's hologram on the back, mm -hmm. and it has yeah. it has those it has these funny numbers on there, which you you see, yeah. Yep. I can take these numbers and I can check the balance of the coin and I can actually see that the balance of the coin is one bitcoin. Who pays for the manufacturer of the bitcoin? Uh, the person who, who sold me this bitcoin. Okay. He, char he charges a little like 10% of one bitcoin. Actually someone gave this to me as a present so I, only, I didn't pay anything for it. Mm -hmm. So it's potential and you said oh, well, I just looked on the exchange right there and one bitcoin is worth two euros twenty. Uh, not two euros Oh, two US dollars twenty cents. Two yeah yeah. So that's that's worth two US dollars and twenty cents. Right, and uh, if I want to redeem this, yeah, mm -hmm. to get the one bitcoin out of this, I have to damage the coin. So you see this thing on the back, I have to peel it off. Yeah. And there's a secret code underneath it, which that secret code allows me to spend the bitcoins. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. so th so you can you can you can uh, liquidate the, the bitcoin. Right. So it'd be like having a ten pound note that you could change back into gold. So people would potentially buy cigarettes and alcohol with the, the, um, the bitcoins, right? And, and, the, and, and anything else right. that they're going into. But the thing is, like, if I if I were to say like, yeah, at a shop. You know, yeah, and I said you can use like these bitcoins. People would say, oh, why wouldn't I just use euros? So you could you could you could so anyone could potentially make their own um, their own bitcoin. Right. Because it's got the provided it's got the code and this kind of yeah. the, the system with it. The only thing is like, uh, you know, uh, how do I know the 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 secret key on the on the, once I peel off this hologram to spend the bitcoin actually exists, yeah, yeah. or like it's a valid one for the address that's on the front, mm -hmm. and yeah, essentially I have to trust the person who made this coin. So you have to trust them. Yeah. Yeah, I have to trust the minter of this coin. So th therefore you could have reputable minters in, in certain towns right. and cities that could pr provide currency to the community. Exactly. And, and uh, so you, you could potentially have like a, a Bitcoin in check where, where people would would know would trust the, the Czech Bitcoin maker and know that these were good Bitcoins. Exactly. And so, uh, so yeah, when you said like mint your own Bitcoins, yeah, there's the issue of trust there. And so are there many mints on there? Uh, there's, there's only this guy and one other, one other, the one before this was an experimental one called BitBills. Mm -hmm. This is like the the newest one, and people prefer this one because it's like looks much nicer. Yep. Looks like a real coin. It's called Cas Cassius coins, and uh, and yeah, you can you can mint bitcoins, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but like going back to the shop, it's just. You know, like people would ask, why wouldn't I use euros as opposed to this? And at the, and in terms well, of like real life, but I suppose potentially, you know, if you're selling your your gadgets that you made out of the rubbish at the yeah. local tip, and then you've sold them on the internet, you've been given bitcoins, you've sent an email to someone to send you a hundred bitcoins via the um, via the uh, internet, you've received your bitcoins in the post, and then you can go and. Um, you could go and uh, spend the bitcoins. Yeah, but is there is there, is there a protect? Can you assign the bitcoin numbers to certain people? So if you lose that bitcoin, you've lost the bitcoin. It's a it's yeah, you have lost the bitcoin. And uh, and you have some. What about what about um, like now? If if I burn money, I'm I'm helping to stop inflation. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if if um, with the with the with the bitcoin, what are you doing about it? Is there is is there some kind of um, I don't know? Do you have some kind of uh, central controlling uh, mechanism that shows whether the bitcoins are used or they just stay still wherever they are? They will just stay wherever they are. Yeah. So the thing about Bitcoin is that there will only ever be twenty one million bitcoins. Mm -hmm. At the moment, there's like six million. Mm -hmm. Did I say billion? I meant million. Million. Mm -hmm. All right. There is only six million at the moment. And do you remember I said like these people validating the transactions uh, get a small reward? Yeah. Where actually it's like it's more like uh, a lottery. So let's say you have ten nodes. Uh -huh. One of those nodes will get the reward. Yep. 
So it's, it's like just luck, but it's a, a random process. And uh, so, so you can say like uh, if there's 10 nodes and there's 50 Bitcoins, instead of like 50 Bitcoins distributed over 10 of these participants, mm -hmm. it's like each participant has a 1 in 10 chance of getting 50 Bitcoins. So it's the same thing mathematically. So are you, are you a rich man? <laughs> no. So, but, but you're, 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 you are like a, one of these people that is creating the network or part of it. If I helping, yeah, helping, develop, the software. helping develop the software, and, yeah. and, and you so if if I if I put if I buy um, one million bitcoins, there are only twenty one million bitcoins. Is that right? Did you say? Uh, there is potentially the. If you say you buy one million bitcoins, well, what, what's the? There's how many? The potential. Um, there are only a certain amount of bitcoins that can be created. Well, it's like uh, I said. So every ten minutes, yeah. yeah, fifty bitcoins come into existence. Okay. But every four years, mm -hmm. that reward that's given to each participant halves. So in two years' time, that's going to drop to twenty-five. Mm -hmm. In another four years, that's going to drop to twelve and a half. Mm -hmm. In another four years, that's going to drop to like six point whatever. So there's, it's kind of like a bit of a, would you say a pyramid system, or you know, like the people that get in first, first like this, or it's like that. This is kind of the establishment factor of the currency. Yeah. So it's it's uh, diminishing over time, uh -huh. and by like 2030 or around that time, it will only ever be 21 million. They will all have cut. So 21 this million. There will be a maximum of 21 million right. bitcoins. And then it, they would, most of them will be out there, like about 20 million or. Because that's, that's not very many coins. Really. Well, you, you say that, but one bitcoin is divisible to eight decimal places and potentially even more. So, you, so what you're saying now is that you know, I should go and get five bitcoins or something and just put them in my jar and, <laughs> and, and, and have, have five bitcoins yeah, maybe. In, the bottom, in the bottom drawer and maybe they made my retirement by the time. Because yeah. you don't know how big the bitcoin could get if it became a, a major transfer transfer of uh, people were transferring money all around the world. Yeah. But about the divisibility thing, mm -hmm. like you could actually run the, like the whole Bitcoin economy as it is now, mm -hmm. one Bitcoin, yeah. instead of like six million, because it's so divisible. And the whole point is like in the future, mm -hmm. instead of like saying one Bitcoin, maybe people say like one milli Bitcoin or one micro Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, so, 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 so yeah. okay. But I think that that, uh, that explains most of it to me. I kind of understand more. How yeah. It works. Uh, like I was like talking before, like about what about it being like unregulated and decentralized. Mm -hmm. The properties that come out of that are pretty interesting. So you you get like a current you get currency that's you know international and has no concept of borders. Mm -hmm. You get like something that's running like all day, every day, like twenty four hours, seven days a week, all night long, no bank holiday, Mondays. Yeah. Uh, and you also don't have to deal with all that, like that bank bureaucracy and everything. So someone could, for, for instance, set up a machine and could could validate your Bitcoin for you if you needed to get out regular cash. The, the banks could potentially have a machine where you put your one Bitcoin in and get five thousand crowns out. Yeah, sure. Off the bottom, or, or whatever. Yeah, someone made a vending machine. A vending, Bitcoin. yeah, that's that's what I. That's yeah, what, yeah. yeah so. And. Uh, so what else? Also, the it's got a really strong sense of privacy. So mm -hmm. like uh, governments really like that people are using like credit cards and electronic cash because mm -hmm. that's how they can track track people's movements mm -hmm. and like uh, control people. Uh, so but Bitcoin's like you can't really do that. And it's, it's probably it's probably safer to, to have as well. Like you know, it's less no, no one can really know how many bitcoins you've got. Yeah. And but how do you know how many bitcoins you got? Well, because you can see, because you have like all your addresses. So if I get an address, is it an attached to an email, or is it just an address? And how do I? Okay, so when you when you like download Bitcoin, yeah, you get like this program. Oh, I see. So what I do is I go to I go to a website and I download I go to Bitcoin and I download the um, the software. Yeah, the I've software. got the software on my on my computer and then I. I basically create as many addresses or whatever I want exactly. out, of, out of that, and I say, "Radio, well, I'm, I'm putting this Bitcoin address on my music website. 
people come to my website, they give me a couple of exactly. a couple of a couple of coins, I make a new number up, put a new number on there, right. and so on, and then I know that these addresses yeah. are, are, are worth that. And if you have like two people yep. and you give one person one address and one another address, yep. you can see exactly how much they donated to you. Also you can you could potentially um, give you could send out an email list for instance and you could give every single um, person on your email address the potential to, to give you a Bitcoin if Bitcoins became popular, like right. if they wanted to contribute to a music project or something. Right, so, so but that's how the merchant sites work. So mm -hmm. they give like John one Bitcoin address and they give like Stacy a different Bitcoin address. Yep. And when they like check the first Bitcoin address, they see like there's one Bitcoin sent to it and they know, oh yeah, we only gave this address to John Therefore, it was John that put one Bitcoin in there. Yeah, but then how do you keep track of all, all your addresses? Like you've got like you've got all these addresses, and they're all kept track of on your computer. Well, then yeah, this is like a software thing. There's also an address is, book. Is, is, is that is that is that software potentially um, um, the, the government can say, hey, we want that software or demand? Can they make a demand for that? Well, it's so, on your computer. So so apart from like the police coming and arresting you. Yep. If if you're that's how they would how they could only do it if you like are properly secured and everything. So they'd have to basically take your laptop with the software on there, right. with all your addresses and all the money to, to yeah and to know and maybe they couldn't even like do that even and, and, and because so uh, you could like yeah encrypt you can use strong encryption to protect your like data uh -huh. with a like a, a strong password yep. and yeah they could only like get access to those. If you tell them your password. So, the, so what you're saying is that if you're really smart and you use bitcoins, it's it's an untraceable means of, of sending money ar around the world, and exactly. it's really it's really practical because you can you could have all your retirement in bitcoins or whatever. And yeah. Although well, I wouldn't advise people to put their retirement into bitcoin at the moment. It's still a very early system. Mm -hmm. So yeah, anything can like happen. Yeah. Although I'm very like confident in it, but I wouldn't want to be responsible for like. Someone losing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Although I, I do encourage people to like maybe put like a couple of you know dollars, hundred euros or something. If they, or yeah, like hundred dollars. You know, because there is a lot of anger towards the banks right now and all of this shit that they've created, and you know people complaining like oh we need to protest the banks or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this is like a valid means of boycotting them by building our own economy. Yeah, you know, and um, just like get some bitcoins and start spreading the love. You know, like paying people on the internet. And, yeah, especially if you've got like an organic food store or something like that. You yeah, could, exactly. You could do something interesting. It's just a bit of fun. I mean, it, it's not really. And, and I, I suppose the thing is, every time you make a transaction with a dollar or something like that, every time you buy something, you're giving like in, in check. It's like twenty percent DPH on goods that you're buying, and everything is is going into the into the system. And, and I, don't, I don't know whether the services that you get when you pay this money for these goods and services is. Um, is so good. Yeah, well, also the cool thing about Bitcoin is remember I mentioned these validators before. Mm -hmm. Is uh, uh, so they're getting the, this reward, and I said the more people who do this, the more difficult it gets, it becomes to get the reward. Mm -hmm. And actually, what that's called is called a difficulty adjustment. So the more people that join and start doing this like calculation to secure the network, the more difficult it becomes to earn this reward. Uh -huh to solve this puzzle. And so what that means, right, is that, uh, is, uh, so, so you know you're doing this calculation, right? Uh, the, one, the one thing to like think about is like they're doing a calculation, why can't just like loads of people join and start doing the calculations? Well, it's because there's a cost to doing that calculation. So you, you know like if you're... you're what's, what's the cost to become a calculator? Here's the thing, here, here's the thing, think about this, is like, when your computer is processing, some, is trying to solve some problem, your processor is running. Mm -hmm. And if your processor is running, your processor is using up electricity. Yeah. And if you're, if you're using up electricity, you're costing yourself money. Mm -hmm. So that's what the cost is. That's the cost of keeping the Bitcoin alive. Right, it's the cost of, yeah, it's the cost of doing these calculations, the electrical cost. And you know, like I said, more people join the network, it becomes more difficult. Mm -hmm. That means that I have to find, try and find ways. That if I still want to keep participating and trying to earn this reward, that I use less electricity. 
And so the system becomes really efficient because people find more and more efficient ways to do these calculations. Mm -hmm. And so, and... Uh, so you think, it, you think it's kind of healthy for the whole, the whole ecology of... Yeah, the monetary system. You don't need to have cars transporting money about. You don't need to have these employees and these banks being heated up, heated up. Yeah, yeah. Now you have like a truly like market-driven uh, financial system with no middlemen. You know, none of these like parasites who contribute nothing to the economy. And, and where did the idea come from? Like, who, who's kind of okay? Well, there is a movement on the internet. Mm -hmm of people, like it's called the hacker movement or the free software movement, and it's responsible for lots of things like the internet, you know, uh, Wikipedia, which is the not largest, like one of the largest knowledge resources on the internet itself. It's responsible for Linux, which is an operating system that anyone can use, and it runs most of the infrastructure of the internet. They're responsible for WikiLeaks, which has helped uh, human rights around the world. It's responsible for BitTorrent, which made uh, access to media and culture free for everyone. So it's kind of a, it, it really fits in with the kind of the, the whole idea of of kind of, um, uh, of transfer of materials around the internet freely, transfer right. of money around the internet yeah, freely. This this free software movement is concerned with uh, employing technology not for like personal monetary gains, mm -hmm. but for positive, revolutionary, social good. And one of the problems that have been peop uh, these hackers have been trying to think about for a long time, for many years already, mm -hmm. was like how to solve the money problem. So this is, a, this is really the, the solution, and they, they, no one can think of a better solution at the moment. Well, uh, they, w they were thinking for like a long time, and there are a number of schemes that people came up with. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it got one, to like... Well, it got that. It got like all the puzzle pieces were there, mm -hmm. except for like one, one missing problem, mm -hmm. and that was like a du the double spending problem. So we had there were all these like clever cryptographic schemes, mm -hmm. but like how to prevent someone who has spent like some money using one of these like uh, hacker bitcoins, hacker monetary systems. Well, this is before Bitcoin existed. How to prevent them like when they spend the money also spending it again to someone else. And, uh, and there was another system mm -hmm. which was uh, developed for email, uh, which was like a, a, a scheme to prevent spammers. And it was like, how could, and, uh, okay, so like, let's say. It's just one, one potential problem that I, I, I can see is that, for instance, you've got like a um, hundred, you know, a hundred bitcoins or something that you've been given by fans to different um, email addresses and someone pinches your laptop. Yeah. What happens? Yeah, well, you lose your bitcoins at the moment. So you haven't got some kind of, um, is there some kind of function on Google or something? Well, this thing I said is a very, like, geek-oriented, like, simplistic thing at the moment. Yeah, yeah. The whole point is, like, to eventually, like, build devices that where you could have, on. that have your bitcoins on. Or there's, there's an interesting film science fiction film now called Time, where basically it's the premise that time Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw, I've seen, like, a few clips of that, yeah, yeah. It's quite, quite interesting, and basically you live to your 25, and then you've got a year to live and everything. It's like mom dies, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and it's, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good looking, Mike, because she's young. Yeah, yeah, it's like 50 years, she was like 70. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we were, we were saying about, like, uh, oh yeah, about like that, that, how so this like scheme for emails, mm -hmm. you you know like, spammers, they send like a million emails to everyone. Yeah. And uh, it was like the to accept an email from someone, they have to do some calculation. So potentially, your your Bitcoin address could be your email. Uh, you well, could you money. could you could create a mechanism within the email that will allow that. Mm, uh, yeah, but. I mean, if it, you know, with the right technology, because therefore, I mean, some people are obviously not concerned about hiding their wealth or hiding their money or whatever. So one Bitcoin address is enough for them forever, and and they're just wanting to avoid the transactions from the bank, so they could have that tied to their Gmail address or, or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and then, then yeah. that way, there, would, there wouldn't be any potential of. Um, yeah. So you said to like John uh, Foo dot net. 
Yeah, I, no, I, I just wondered whether there were mechanisms like you'd have your, your Bitcoin attached to an email, so you, every time someone would, I don't know, send you some Bitcoin, it would come to your email or something. Yeah, well, we, we still have to like build all of these systems because like Bitcoin is like a core yep. of like a larger system that's eventually going to exist. Uh -huh. So like I said before, you know, we would you could have your div your bitcoins on a device that you can protect, uh -huh. but maybe but also there would be like backup systems. What so about transferring funds from PayPal to Bitcoin? Is that difficult? Yeah, that's that can't work because so you you know like the internet. Yeah. Uh, there's been this for a long time like people have needed some way on the internet to send money around mm -hmm. and like PayPal doesn't work especially for selling like virtual goods because uh, if you sell me like if you tell me like a piece if I ask you to paint me an artwork yeah, yeah. and you like send it to me if I send you some PayPal and you say okay I've got the PayPal and you send me the artwork mm -hmm. I can actually get my PayPal money back because so I go to PayPal and I say I initiate something called a charge bag and I say I never got that good that he promised to deliver and like PayPal will ask you for a tracking number of the parcel that you delivered to me you sent me a virtual good so you don't have a parcel so PayPal automatically makes defers to me and gives me the money and takes it out of your account that's how PayPal have, have, have been doing it up to now so. right so it's called friendly fraud yeah. and also there are numerous uh, times that PayPal just seizes people's funds for no reason. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, uh, some friends of mine raised uh, ten thousand dollars through charity, through just donations from people to have a, a hack meeting, which is like a weekend where people just go and write software for fun. And they had like organized it and booked it and everything. And then PayPal seized the funds, said they, what, they didn't know where the money came from. And they just lost the funds, that's it. Wow. Yeah, that happens all the time. With Bitcoin, that would never happen. And with Bitcoin also, the chargebacks can't happen. So you can, you know, I mean, uh, in, in uh, the Czech Republic, I think it's it's 4.5 percent to do a transaction on um, on PayPal, whereas it's 2.5 percent in the US and, and Australia. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I mean, I, I think I think a lot of people uh, can't afford these kind of kind of charges, so they just use the local services. You know, you know, like when I was in Amsterdam, I uh, I had like some uh, dollars that I wanted to change to like UK pounds, mm -hmm. and I went everywhere. And the only like two places I found was a uh, MoneyGram and Western Union. Mm -hmm. And Western Union, it was like the same MoneyGram Western Union. Western Union said, you know, like we take no fee, we don't charge any fee, but to actually like send the money, I had to change it from US dollars to euros. Uh, British pounds mm -hmm. and they say there's no fee but I looked at the markup on the price and it's 20% so to send 2,000 pound to 2,000 dollars I have to pay 400 dollars just for a woman sitting behind the desk pressing some numbers that's disgusting yeah, yeah. I, 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 think, I think the system's good um, I'm just trying to think of it, anything else I can, I can think of because my, my, it's quite late here all the time 2 a.m. or 2 a.m. 2, 2 a.m. or something. Yeah, yeah. But it, I, I fully kind of understand, uh, except for the kind of algorithm process and also I the explain. process, the process of the of just the the people involved in the network and the distribution of money. It's a little bit complex these issues, but basically you've got a form of currency in cyberspace that represents a a certain value that is dictated by what is in the in the in the currency and and the, the actual. Uh, and yet there's potentially only a certain amount, like did you say every certain amount of minutes there are 50 yeah, bit, 10 minutes. There's 50 bitcoins. So there's only, there's only, there's not really that many bitcoins in the, in the, um, in the marketplace. Well there's 6 million. But that's not a lot of bitcoins when you consider, so if there's 6 million bitcoins that have been created and the value of the bitcoin is 2.2 dollars 20 US, then that means there's the, the, the the whole um, value of the of the currency is is worth uh, 20 what 20 million or something 20 20 million so so um, it is a very small market right? but get, but will that will the uh, bitcoin actually like uh, for instance if 
if more people get into the network, does that mean there's more creation of bitcoins or not? Or it's set um, at 50 bitcoins? Per right, set 50 bitcoins per 10 minutes. Okay. And then dropping every like four years wow. until it reaches yeah, zero. Sorry, there are, I'm going to get to this. Yeah. But, so eventually there's like, eventually in time there will just be like a quarter or a quarter or hardly any bitcoins yeah, yeah. in 2100. And actually, actually it like keeps dropping but it does eventually reach zero. Because like, yeah, I say 21 million, yep. but it's like 21 million plus eight zeros because, you know, Bitcoin's divisible by eight decimal places. Mm -hmm. So you take that number, like 21 times 10 to the power of eight. And, and do you think that... You know, 21 million plus eight zeros. So what about the, the financial crisis and the, the, the credit creation of more Bitcoins and, and all this sort of stuff? It's not going to happen. You know, like uh, if there's a kind of, a, a, I don't know, a financial crisis... Well, I, I don't think you could have like a government just like decide to print more money. Yeah, that's, well, that's what I mean. You can't yeah. you can't print more bitcoins. Exactly. It's just, it's just a you like looking you like look at these countries like Iran mm -hmm. or Zimbabwe where they have massive set, massive amounts of inflation, mm -hmm. or you look at like uh, you know Serbia mm -hmm. where they had some of the worst inflation since World War Two. You know during the time of Milosevic. And they were just like printing more money to fund their wars of genocide. Like in the past, if you like go back to the past, when a king wanted to go to war, he had to raise the funds from the popular population. Mm -hmm. So really, like yeah, if we decide to go to war, it should be like something like if people want, if people feel like we should go to war, they they should. They have would have to. They would have to get the actual bitcoins from the, right. the from the people in their country to. To fund to, it. To, to fund a war, which, yeah. would, which, would, which would mean that there would be a valid reason for, exactly. the, for the war. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. like war is supposed to be like a large, a last ditch. Yeah. You know, thing you do, not like something you do like every like weekend or every year. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally. You know, you don't just. It's not a light thing to go around like killing someone. It should be like a really, you know, like this is a last choice we have. You know. Yeah. Their own. and people must feel like, oh yeah, we really have to do this. Whereas now, now it's kind of all hypothetical because there's so much money in the system that no one's really accountable for it. Yeah. So well, it's yeah. always easier to spend other people's money than your own. And so, who, who are some of the people that support the, the Bitcoin, and who are some of the people that are against the Bitcoin? Uh, well, Max Kaiser really likes Bitcoin, and you know him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, are, there are a lot of people who support Bitcoin. Is it, is it, is it, and, and who, the Creative Commons endorse it as well? Yeah, Creative Commons likes it. Uh -huh. uh, you know, Falkvinger, he's the leader of, he founded the Swedish Pirate Party. Uh -huh. They also support Bitcoins. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. And, and what about what about some of the opposition? You, you mentioned there were, there were some problems. Yeah, US Senator Charles Schumer, uh -huh. you know, he called it a scheme for drug trafficking networks. Yeah, it's a bit weird, like this 70 year old guy suddenly out of nowhere starts attacking something off the internet. You know, you'd think that they, you know, like where would they suddenly learn about something very like niche on the internet out of nowhere? And, and so, so for, for the, the, best, the best use of it now is really just between like uh, people selling, like a, I'm just kind of curious for me. Who, I'm, I'm not really well, the Bitcoin sure. market like, is just, really small. Yeah, yeah. Well, just how to get into the Bitcoin. Like I've got a, I've got a hundred dollars in a PayPal account. Yeah. How, how would I turn that into uh, to um, thirty Bitcoins or forty yeah. Bitcoins? You go to an exchange, and there are many. Mm -hmm. But if, obviously, I'm going to say like the best is Intersango.com. Would be your exchange. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so you the site has some way that you like deposit money on there. Yep. And then you like. Can you do that through direct transfer? Or yeah, bank transfer. And do you have like links with some of the international banks, like a, like with a Czech bank or with a? Yeah, with yeah. A it's for all the all the current major currencies like euro, US dollar, GBP. Mm -hmm. And so you make this deposit in the bank, and then it appears in your account. Yeah. And there's a marketplace, mm -hmm. and you can you like put in an order, and you say I want to buy like ten bitcoins for, you know. Twenty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah, that's a going rate. And someone else wants to be selling their bitcoins at that rate, 
for a better rate, so they might be giving you like more for your money than you get, and it matches you both up and does the exchange for you, and then you have bitcoins and they have dollars or whatever else, and you can both cash them out. And, and who at the moment, from your experience of, of running the exchange, what, what people are coming to you for business? Uh, well, do, I don't really know what they know, do. Yeah, like, they're but, just but people. People just uh, just kind of uh, appear. Yeah, I suppose it's not really their business to know yeah. what they're where it's coming yeah. from. But, uh, do you think do you think it's kind of is the business growing? Like, are there more and more people coming? Uh, well, uh, up until about a, a few months ago, Bitcoin was like growing like really fast, yeah. and and then there was like this event which. Uh, caused some like loss of confidence mm -hmm. and and then it like it dropped yep. and since then there's been like a lot less activity but that's totally fine I think because what was the event that caused this problem? Uh, the event was so you know there's all these exchanges and they're yep. private companies mm -hmm. there was another exchange that was broken into and someone stole a lot of money so that devalued the currency right because and all the media was like incorrectly saying, going like, "Oh, Bitcoin's crashed," because but what? They, but, they, but they potentially only taken money of those people as well, right? Isn't that right? Uh, they yeah. Well, if they robbed the exchange, the, the the money that they took didn't belong to the Bitcoins. It belonged to the people that were running the exchanges. No, no, it belonged to the people's Bitcoins. Okay, so the, what happened to the Bitcoin? Uh, well, the person stole them. Or Oh, so someone actually stole the bitcoins. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a bit more complicated than that because uh, what happened was this company, mm -hmm. they they limited, uh, you know, bitcoin withdrawals. They said you can only withdraw like, uh, uh, I think it was like, uh, five hundred dollars worth of bitcoins a day. Yep. And someone found a way. So they broke into their computers and found a way to like give themselves lots of bitcoins, and so but he's, he he wants to cash out all this money like all the very quickly, yeah. But he's just magicked himself. Uh, but there's this limit, right? So w what does he do? You know, there's this order book of people uh, buying bitcoins, yeah, and that sets the price. Mm -hmm. So he buys the entire order book with his imaginary bitcoins, yeah. and that would that would mean the price listed on the exchange is zero, right? Yep. So now that means he can cash out all of his bitcoins all at once. Because the price is zero. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now the site mm -hmm. took a loss of some bitcoins because they keep the majority of their bitcoins offline mm -hmm. in something called an offline wallet. So you know I said about these bitcoin addresses. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be online for, to receive a bitcoin payment. As long as the address is there, people can send you money. You don't have to be on the internet. Yep. So what, what, like a security measure that a lot of like, and every like merchant should do in Bitcoin, is to create two wallets. One wallet with the majority of funds is kept offline, and you send all the money there, and you don't connect it to the internet, mm -hmm. except to top up what is called the live wallet. And the live wallet is the wallet which keeps a small reserve and money comes in and then you send money out from that wallet you see and when it depletes you you go to the offline wallet and top it back up again so you can keep sending out payments so there, there basically there, there, there has to be some better kind of security for for people that are not so technical right to get in, to get involved in the yeah. bitcoin and the bitcoin kind of our idea because yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's it's, uh, so that so that's kind of that, that kind of created a, a whole a big dive in the price and now things have picked up. Yeah. Well, I think we're, now it's like the long haul. Yeah. So if you look at any like technology like Wikipedia, mm -hmm. BitTorrent, the internet, Linux, these things usually like take ten years to adoption on board. Yeah. And Bitcoin has like this ten year adoption cycle. I think that's my personal opinion. But it could, I mean, it could quite easily take off. Though, I, mean, I mean, especially in so few coins, and there could be a couple of people. Yeah, really but I think we need to like develop the infrastructure first. So it's better. It's better that it's a slow process. Anyway. Yeah, because there is a lot of work to do yeah. to make it like accessible for people to use. 
to tune some engineering problems that are there. Yeah. You know, to properly like test the system to make sure everything is okay, which I'm, I think it really is. The, yeah, you know, I was like talking earlier about uh, the spammers with the email. Mm -hmm. you, so, yeah, so like these spammers send like a million emails. And what if you like told to a spammer that you have that you have to solve some ma mathematical problem before I will accept your email? So they they perform this problem, and then you accept the email. Now imagine if a spammer has to do this a million times. So it's a, it's good because it's anti spam. It's, it's right. difficult for people to communicate anything but money. No, no, but I mean like if if a spammer sends a million emails and they have to do a million of these calculations. Yeah. Their computer would be running like a lot of the time, and they'd be burning up a lot of electricity and costing themselves a lot of money. And suddenly now they can't send a million emails. Well, that was a scheme proposed in the past to stop spammers. Yeah. Except if you send a legitimate email now, like from me to you, yeah. it's like one calculation, I'm not too worried about it, my computer can easily handle it. Uh, but that didn't get adopted. But that's what Bitcoin uses to make sure that someone doesn't cheat the system. So, so like let's so. What Bitcoin is basically is this ledger, mm -hmm. this you know this this database of all of the transactions since the history since the system's inception. Mm -hmm. It contains like every single transaction that occurred in the system, and this database is maintained collectively by the network. And it's unhackable. Uh, yeah, it's unhackable. So that that that, that means that means that. Um I mean, uh, so it's basically like an internet within the internet. Yeah, well there's there's a bunch of these already, like BitTorrent is yeah a network within the internet. Mm -hmm. And Bitcoin is another peer-to-peer -peer network within the internet. But you know, so you remember earlier I said the people getting this reward yeah. for solving this puzzle, what they're actually doing is like making uh, new parts of this database. Mm -hmm. So this database expands in the form of blocks, so new blocks are added onto the end, piece by piece. Mm -hmm. And it's called a blockchain for this very reason, it's a series of blocks. And each one of these blocks, so when I create a transaction, it goes into the Bitcoin network and the people doing this validating collect up all the transactions mm -hmm. and they create a block. And then this block chains onto the end of this series of blocks. Mm -hmm. And that's the new updated history of the network. Now, now remember, I said they're doing this mathematical problem to create this block, yeah. So the more the more um, the more um, bits that you have, the more um, more CPU power it takes to maintain the network. Well, not CPU, but the amount of more electricity it it takes to for the peer-to-peer -peer network to run. Is that right? Networks are recorded. All the, if all the transactions are recorded somewhere, they all have to be recorded equally in other places. Is that what? Uh, it's actually not such a worry. You know, like the database is is growing. Mm -hmm. It's more the fact that you know to make a block, one of these blocks here, yeah, is not an easy task. Yeah? It's some like resource involved. Mm -hmm. You know, I said like you burning electricity, and it's cost. It costs money. You can say like each one of these blocks costed some amount of money to create, right? And I said that the blocks build on top of each other. Okay. So if you make a transaction which is in this block here, yeah, mm -hmm. and then other people you know, broadcast this block to the network and it's accepted and it's added onto the end, new people will start coming and making blocks on top of this block here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And more blocks will come and start making ones on top of this and top of this. And if I want to reverse this block below, not only do I have to reverse this block, but I have to reverse this block, this block, this block, this block and this block. Mm -hmm. And so the amount of money that it will cost me, or the amount of resources that it will cost me is the sum of all of these blocks. So as the, as the network expands by creating more blocks to build on top of each other, the transaction gets embedded more deeper and deeper in the network and it becomes harder to reverse until it comes to such a time that it's computationally infeasible to reverse. That it's basically like near impossible. There's so many blocks. Yeah, because there's so many blocks and there's so many people contributing computing power to this system 
like for Bitcoin is like more than any su supercomputer in the world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, it's, it, uh, it seems it seems kind of uh, in, infallible. But I, I suppose I suppose is there any competition to the Bitcoin? No. So the, it's basically the, the only one now. But I mean, I suppose that it's potentially possible that some of these other schemes, like attached to email and other things, could could be. Well, could I think most of these things would complement Bitcoin. You yeah. Know? Or the, so you think that the primarily system is is there? It's like yeah. like a kind of internet for money. Yeah. And also the thing with uh, Bitcoin too is so I use this like analogy of it being like cash. Mm -hmm. It's actually a bit more than cash because like. Uh, you know, like you have 50 bitcoins, yeah? yeah? Those 50 bitcoins are actually like a contract saying I have 50 bitcoins. And when I like create a transaction, that's also another contract. So to actually send you like a bitcoin, I'm not actually sending you anything, I'm signing it over to you. Mm -hmm. I'm, like cre I'm like saying that this belongs to this address. So you think you could like buy an airline ticket with bitcoins yet, or are there any schemes like that? Yeah, place? you can buy an airline ticket. And um, you can buy music, or you can... Yeah, you can maybe, buy... There maybe, are people accepting bitcoins from music, and loads and, of artists. And, and a lot of the charitable kind of uh, bitcoins. Yeah, there are charities accepting bitcoins too. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, but the services like eBay, they want, they've, there's no way you can put a... No. Um, I'll, I'll they're too system. worried about, you know, like the legal you know, ambiguity around Bitcoin. And, and uh, do you think that will be resolved soon? Do you think that no, not be, soon. But couldn't, it be, couldn't, it, could, but couldn't it be in the favour of some of the smaller governments to adopt Bitcoin? You know, like for instance, if you if a com if a current company a country like company, country like Greece or something has a totally bankrupt system, maybe they could just get rid of the old one and say, hang on, we'll just use Bitcoins and Do you think a government's gonna willingly give up power over the monetary system that they have. Well, they could do some kind of. I, I, I don't know. But I'm just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. I'm just saying. If, it, if things got that bad, you know, that, that they, they, they could. I'm not, maybe some African countries where things are really bad, yeah. or, um, or or something. You know, people might say, hey, hang on, maybe we'll trade on Bitcoin. It's it's basically just a what if, you know. Yeah, yeah. These things are like yeah, hard to tell what's going to happen. But have you had any interest like from from people within the, the, the financial? system, you know, like yeah. banking regulators that are, that are looking at it and saying, hang on, this is good, or even people, yeah. even people within the, within the, like, US dollar currency saying, hang on, maybe we should be going to a, a standard like, like this for our currency rather than, so, you know, changing a, changing a currency back to this so it's more, it's more accountable. In, in, in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people actually use mobile phone credit as a form of, like, money. So, you know, like, a lot of Africans have all these countries and they work in between them mm -hmm. and they want to like send money to each other. They deal in mobile phone cards or something. Or well what they do is they, they buy mobile phone credit and you can actually send that across borders and you know there is a like a fee, large fee associated with this transfer. Yeah. People actually effectively use it for as a form of like uh, currency. So I'll send you 2,000 yes. Right. And then they'll distribute yeah, that to their, Then they'll distribute that within their community. Too. And there are actually like vendors in the cities who buy and sell this mobile phone uh, minutes. And there was a South African company that wanted to use bitcoins, and they they were like talking to us. But the reason why they couldn't do it was the legal ambiguity, the legal problem. But they were otherwise a big fan of bitcoin. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, it's, it's interesting. I think I think you've answered enough. My brain, my brain is full of bitcoins. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>